and welcome to Nana's Kitchen at the Davenport Public Library. I am so glad that you're back to um, make another, yet another delicious cookie. Today we are going to make PB&J bars. Don't you absolutely love peanut butter and jelly? I know that I do. Um, so this is this is kind of fun. It's it's a little bit different than what we've been doing. Um, we're going to have a lot more ingredients. And the first thing that we're going to do, as always, is read through the read through the recipe and make sure that we have all of our things um, gathered up for us. Okay, so we're going to need two cups of oatmeal. So make sure that you have your oatmeal. We're going to need a cup and a half of flour. We have our flour. We're going to need three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. We're going to need baking soda. Here's my baking soda. We're going to need a half a cup of melted butter. Now. Here's my butter. It's melted. The way that I melted mine, and you can um, you can see it's still got a little bit of a a little bit of a chunk in it. That's okay. Is I put it into the microwave, and it took about 45 seconds, and I microwaved it in 15 second intervals just to make sure that it didn't get burnt. Um, and I didn't want it to go over. So that's how you can melt your butter. We need a half a cup of peanut butter. I have my peanut butter, and you can use creamy or crunchy, whichever whichever you prefer. <clears throat> the creamy peanut butter is going to make a, a, a more dense kind of a, a cookie bar, and then the the crunchy peanut butter is going to be a little bit more flaky. Okay, and then we're going to need some chopped peanuts, and then we need some jam to spread in the middle. Okay. So, are we ready to get started? First, we need to preheat our oven. So, to, you can turn on your oven, or you can have your grown-up turn on your oven to 350. And then, once that's ready, you can get out your pan and line it with parchment paper and then prepare it. And to do that, you can use, if you have cooking spray, you can use cooking spray and spray it down. I used butter, and you can use Crisco or margarine or whatever your preferences, but I use butter and just spread it all um, on top of the parchment paper so that the cookie then won't stick later. So we'll prepare our pan and then we'll set that aside. And now we're ready to measure. So we're going to get our big bowl and we're going to start by mixing the oatmeal, the flour, the sugar, the soda, and the butter. So that's pretty much everything. So you can get out your oatmeal and we want to measure two cups. And here's my cup measure. You can see I have the one cup line is not quite at the rim. Okay, so that's one cup. And two cups. Okay, I have my, I have my oatmeal. And now we need flour. For flour, we need a cup and a half. So I'm going to use my half cup measure. And I'm going to fill it three times. And that will make a cup and a half. So there's one. Two. There's my flour. And now we need our brown sugar. Flour aside. For our brown sugar, we need three quarters of a cup. So for that one, again, I don't have a three quarter cup measure, but I do have a one quarter cup. So I'm going to fill it three times. So there's one. And with brown sugar, you want to kind of squash it down when you put it in there. And a lot of times a recipe will say that to pack it. So if it says brown sugar packed or packed tightly, that just means they want you to squish it down. There's two. And there is three. 
Okay, so there are all of my dry, oh no, I still need my soda. So we'll get our baking soda. And for that, we need one teaspoon. So here's my one teaspoon. My baking soda is kind of a, it's got some chunks in it. It's kind of lumpy. Okay. And I'm just going to stir that a little bit just to make sure that the um, that the baking soda gets mixed into the flour. We don't want to have just places where there's a whole bunch of baking of baking soda. Okay, and now we're going to add our butter. I'm going to need to get out a big spoon. And we'll just pour that butter right in there. Okay, here it is stirred. Okay, we're just gonna stir this until it gets until it gets moist. It won't mix all the way in. I mean it's not gonna get like cookie dough or cake dough. It's going to stay a little bit on the crumbly side. And you might find lumps of brown sugar in there where the brown sugar and the butter have uh, kind of um, worked together. And so you, just, you can just smash those out with your spoon. How's it going? I do like peanut butter and I do like jelly. I think one of my favorite things um, is to eat apples with peanut butter on it. Okay. See, it's still it's still pretty crumbly. And that's and that's just fine. Okay, so we want to take a cup of this and set it aside. And we're going to save that and use it for the topping after we spread the jelly on it. So you can get your one cup, um, your one cup measure again. And just pull out a cup and set it aside. Have you been thinking about, or have you been wondering when we're going to add the peanut butter since it's PB and J? Well, we're going to add it right now. I used a spatula and pulled all the peanut butter out of my jar and put it into this cup. So you can do that if you'd like. I, I really like these rubber spatulas. And we're going to just fold that right into our mixture. so okay this feels different when you stir it doesn't it it still isn't going to get like um, cake or cookie dough but it will be moister than what we had before than what we're starting with <clears throat> what kind of jelly did you are you using are you going to use strawberry or grape or raspberry? To be honest, I haven't even got my jelly out of my fridge yet, so I don't know what I'm going to use. I know, I was supposed to get that out at the very beginning when we were reading through the instructions. That was 
not a very good example. It would serve me right if I didn't have jelly now. Okay, how is yours how is yours coming along? You don't want it to be too crumbly. And if it doesn't seem like it's mixing up very well for you, you could try using a fork because a fork will mash it up a little bit better. So, totally up to you. And again, that if you're using creamy peanut butter, it's going to be a, a much creamier mix with the crunchy peanut butter. It's just going to be a little bit more crumbly. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Or, that's the way the cookie bar crumbles. Okay, I'm happy with mine. See, it's still, it's still pretty crumbly. I'm happy with it. I'm going to bring my, my prepared pan over here. And I'm going to just pour this mix right in there. Oh. We want to keep it in inside the paper, not outside the paper. The recipe says to use a 9 by 9 pan, and that is the perfect size. If you don't happen to have a 9 by 9 and you're using another size, that's fine too. Um, this one, I think, is, it's not quite 9 by 9. It is more like, oh, 7 by 9. So it's going to be a little bit thicker bar, and it will take just a little bit longer to cook. So I smashed that all down on there, and now it doesn't feel that crumbly. So hopefully that's what the, that's the way that yours worked out as well. And once you have it smoothed in your into your pan, then you want to get your jelly. I am using strawberry, and we want to use one cup. And I have my one cup filled with that other topping. So I am going to use my half a cup. I'm going to rinse out the flour that was in there. And really, you don't need to measure this if you don't want to. You know how much jelly you want to put on it. So here's a half a cup. I'm going to put that on there. For this smaller pan, I'm going to use a little bit less. Okay, so we'll put that on there and then we want to just spread that out. Getting hungry now? I can just, I'm, I'm imagining peanut butter and jelly cookies. Okay. I have my jam spread on there. So that's what that looks like. You want it pretty even. If it's not exactly even, it's okay too. To make our topping, we are going to take that one cup that we've set aside and put it right back in the bowl. And then we're going to add our nuts. We have I have a half of a cup of, of peanuts here. And you can use whatever kind of peanuts. 
that you want. Dry roasted are good, um, but it doesn't, it's not going to make that much difference in the, in the final taste. So you'll just mix the, the nuts in with that, with that original mixture. And then we're going to sprinkle it over our jelly. So we can just take a spoonful at a time and just, just sprinkle it. This was pretty fast and easy, wasn't it? After reading the, um, the recipe, did you think it was going to be harder? That's the thing about cooking. Sometimes it seems like it's going to be hard and take a lot of time, but once you get started and you just start doing, you do a thing and then you do another thing and then pretty soon you're done. of it on because there's not much left in here. Perfect. Is it beautiful? Here's what mine looks like. Okay, I'm ready to put it in the oven. So my oven is preheated to 350. So I'm going to put it in and we're going to bake it for 35 minutes or until it's bubbly. So why don't you go ahead and have your grown-up help you. Put your um, put your PB and J bars in the oven, and then um, we'll come back to the video in 35 minutes when it's done. Okay, has it been 35 minutes? Are you ready to take it out? Let's take a look and see how it looks. Okay, here's how mine looks. It's a, it's a little bubbly on the edges. It looks pretty good. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cool it. So we want to cool it until, until the pan is um, like at room temperature. And then we put it in the refrigerator for two hours. Um, it could be a little less. And then when it's, when it's thoroughly chilled, then we can take it out, cut it into bars, and voila, we have peanut butter and jelly bars. Thank you so much for um, cooking along with me, and I will see you, I'll see you soon.